Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It feels like such a long time, but now we are back and we are at the Gigantica main lake. I'm going to be showing you how to use one of these correctly, how to make sure that is here in your spot, all the stuff that you need to bring with you, more importantly what not to bring with you because you don't need the kitchen sink, and how I tackle a place like the Gigantica main lake. Keep watching because somewhere in this video is going to be the details of how you and a friend can join me for a week in October fishing the Gigantica Road Lake. Can you tell I'm a little bit excited? A trip to this 35 acre lake makes you feel like a kid at Christmas. The thoughts of what lay ahead for the week give you them butterflies in your stomach. The journey of 245 miles from Calais is full of excitement and optimism, with some impressive scenery along the way as well. Arriving to the lake before 1pm only adds to the suspense whilst you wait for them gates to open. Once in, it's time to catch up with your fellow anglers and meet some old and new faces. Wait, wait, what was that? <laughs> what a poser. With the facilities used and a drink in hand, it's time for the walk around. This is the time to get a little bit more serious and listen intently to the bailiff's knowledge. If you don't hear everything now, don't worry, the bailiffs will come round after the draw and spend some time with you to explain again. Now, the dreaded draw time. I hate this part, the unknown. What number will I get? Where will you fish? Stop smiling and get on with it. Right, you have finally got in your swim, the drawer has been done. You have chosen where you are fishing for your week. Now get your house in order and once you've done that, you're gonna be an eager beaver to be getting your rods out. You've still got all the information from the bailiff in your head. 25 wraps here, 30 wraps there, do this, do that. All that is valuable information and keep it in your mind. However, there is no better way of finding out exactly what you're fishing on than letting out yourself. So grab a bare lead, 
and you're going to be casting around. We all got different abilities. If you can only do 16, 17 reps, then find yourself somewhere comfortable at that range to do it. I have done the same thing. I've cast what feels like 100 times. And with the information from the bailiff, which was 30 reps last week was too far. The fish were closer in. The gentleman that was in here the week before was fishing at 25 and was also on a, one on a zig, two on the bottom. He caught two off the bottom and one on the zig. I'm thinking I'm going to go 25. That's comfortable for me. I like that range. Make for an easy week. And to be fair, this week from what we've seen around the lake, already on the walk around, the fish are in the margin. So me being miles and miles out there is not going to be beneficial. So how do we do that? You cast your bare lead 100 times, find your spot you're happy with. Make sure you're landing on it, easy peasy. Biggest question that always gets asked and really confuses people is how much distance do I have to take off of my spot to ensure I'm casting and baiting to the right place where my rigs are? Now we can, all the calculations and maths you can get rid of. What we're gonna do is you're gonna slip on a marker to your bare lead and we are gonna cast this out of the lake. We're gonna pop this up and then all we're going to do is grab our spod and cast directly to it. Once that's done, we know that our spod is landing exactly where our rigs are going to land. So this is all wrapped up to 25. Let's get this out there and then I'll get the spod out straight after. Very important when you're doing this as well to always cast from the same position. Okay, don't be doing it over there, you just change the lead. So do it all from the same position. Me here, I've got a bit of chicken wire on the edge of the swim and there's a little blank bit of line. That is my marker, that's where I'm gonna be standing. So let's throw this out there. Hopefully hit my clip. There we go. Feel it down exactly the same as I would do my fishing rods. Should go crashing down with a donk, bonk. There it is. So all we need to do now is make sure your line's tight. Is take it off the clip, bad arm open, holding on to your line, and just let it rise up. Now this can take some time, it's 22 foot of water out there. So we're just gonna pop it up. And then straight away, we're gonna put this rod down and we're gonna go and pick up our spod rod, fill it up with some bait and cast straight at the, the marker. But it takes out all them calculations, do this, do that. Right, so that's finally up there. Now just remember, when you put this down, it drags the line back as well. So just be careful that you can still see your marker. So pop that down. So the marker has disappeared. So just release the clutch a little. And there it is, sitting on the surface. So let's go and get the spod rod and find out our distance. So, get some bait in. Just to weight it down. Nice and easy. And you're literally gonna cast at that marker. I try and pass, uh, cast past it and then bring it back in a straight line so I know exactly it's on the point. So that goes out. I know that's past it, I'll start feathering it down. But so that's just beyond it. I'll come straight down. I literally just pull it close. Let it pop up. It's still not there. Still not there. I went a bit too far past it. Bit more. Now I would say that's exactly on it. So what I'm gonna do is clip it up right there now i know that every time i spot and hit that clip it's right on where that marker is there is no getting it wrong there is no maths no nothing some people do say with a toe on the water could be moving your marker over that is possible but it won't be a lot so don't worry it's never caused me any issues now it's a lake not a river so there's no problem now if you really want to know what distance your spot is at or clipped at, then get it around the wrap sticks. But me personally, not really bothered right now. I might do by the end of the week and get in my notes if I've had a successful week. But if not, that's it. So this is in. This is now clipped up for the remainder of the week. That is the spot. My rods are, rods are at 25. 
my marker with that parked up tells me where I should fish this. Be my chicken tonight. Bit of chicken. Got a few of them, yeah, bit of chicken. What with chips? Chips and peas. Yeah. How do you like your chicken? I've never really asked you that. I would have thought cooked raw chicken would have looked so good yeah, for your gut, innit? I'd like, do you like it a roast, boiled, oh, fried? If you had to choose between a roast and a fried chicken, oh, someone's bibbing. Where would you go with it? Or would you have both? Roast fried. I think I'd have it roasted. I think you, my choice. What's, what's the trimmings? I'd just have a roast dinner. Roast dinner, full stop. Full stop yeah. Give me a roast dinner. Me a plain, roast dinner. or do, would you would you like spicy potatoes? No. Plain. no? no. Plain. What about garlicky onion gravy? No. No. No, I'm too much of a plain cane to give me. Uh, Mexican bread. I don't even no. know what that is, but I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 I've never heard of that. Do you want me to turn this on? Yeah, you go. Go for it. Mexican bread. No, I've never heard of Mexican bread. I'm quite a plain Jane. Give me Bisto straight out of the tub thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine by me. But it what has to be dessert? thick. It has to be thick. I'm not a dessert guy, so honestly, I would go jelly and ice cream. Jelly and ice cream? Yeah. Simple. Mm. So oh, going jelly, back to... Actually, jelly and ice cream, whipped cream, bit of strawberry sauce. Strawberry sauce or that fish sauce, you know? The no, no, strawberry, strawberry sauce. Man. <laughs> I thought it was in the blood. I thought you, <laughs> no, you got no, a, no. This is a lifestyle. You've got to eat, eat what no, the fish eat, you know, get all that in. Not that gross. Yeah. Would no. it be, this is a very interesting question. I haven't thought to ask anyone. Is it ironic or disrespectful if you left here and your first place before you got home, you're starving hungry, you stop at the fish and chip shop? <laughs> That's ironic. <laughs> Not disrespectful. You don't find it disrespectful? No. Uh, would no. you feel, sorry, would you give the same treatment to the haddock in that fish? No. The same love and the care and no. attention? No. You wouldn't bait up the plate? No. Nothing. No. Catch them, kill them, eat them. In but batteries not, or? Yeah, no, not carp fish. Not carp fish? No, not so at all. Had, had a catch them, cuddle them, kiss them. <laughs> it's completely different. Set them free after. Set them free after, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, set them free. Yeah, I couldn't be, no. I couldn't even think that. about eating carp fish to be quite honest. Apparently. You go to, you go to bed haunted, didn't it? You're, you're yeah, literally seeing Apparently, it doesn't even taste that nice. Oh, someone's tried it. Yeah, quite a few people have tried Ali uh, Hamidi and Neil Spooner did, I think, when they were doing one of their shows. They, uh, Do you think it, it didn't taste nice because they didn't probably, cook it's it probably, right? It's no, it's probably just in. Maybe, no, they went to a yeah. restaurant. But like Poland, they have it at um, Christmas. Polish people. Oh shit. They have it at Christmas. So instead of turkey, they have cutfish. Yeah. It's no. crazy. Like, I brought my what mate. What size do you think they get for a, uh, a full dinner? Oh, mate. My mate marching, I brought him fishing and we caught one. That was down at Monk's. And he was like, I take this home. <laughs> no. <laughs> Put, <that back laughs> no. Put it back. I was a man. Did he look you. at you with like disgust, like, what? Put back? Yeah, he threw it. He threw it, literally threw it like that. Oh shit. Yeah, God. mate. I was like, what are you doing? But like thinking he kind of knew, but he didn't know. He literally just lobbed it, and I was just got like, oh flying my the air. god! Well, got guts flying through the air. No, not gut. No, just no. It didn't like fall apart or nothing. He just threw it, and this fish was like <laughs> in the water, and I'm like, oh my god! Did it belly flop? Yeah, makes a slap. Well, you hear him jumping out here, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like boom, like that, and then it just disappeared under the water. And hopefully, it swam off. Not turned up dead down at the end of the lake or something. <laughs> we shouldn't laugh, really. No. But, yeah, it was a bit... Did have a go at him. These are prizes, mate. These are trophies. What does it mean to you when you when you catch one? Oh, Give, every, everyone, to, to be fair, everyone's special. Everyone. It doesn't matter. The size doesn't matter, really. Obviously, when you catch your PB, and that's different, but that's more of a human perspective, yeah. why it's special. Um, but they're all different. There's never two carp the same. They may look similar, like common carp looks similar, but the behaviours are different. Everything. You're catching individuals, you're catching different personalities all the time. And people think that's mad to say about carp fish, but it's not. They are all different. Every single one. Every single one. 
And whoever says they ain't, they're just stupid. Dan, explain to us what just happened there. What just happened is the left hand rod just busted off. There's only way I can put it. The bobbin just cracked against the rod and off it went. I'm doing running rigs as well, so it's just pulled through. And it's gone. I'm only fishing five wraps out, would you believe? Sort of to straight out but to the left. And uh, yeah, it's just gone off. But good fight, about 10, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, it's loads of energy. And then in slipped a possible 50 pound mirror. So, tell us what oh. that feels like for someone that's never been fishing. What does that feel like? The adrenaline? Oh, the knees. It's the knees are the worst thing. You just like your legs aren't even there. You just yeah, you go really light. And I'm a big lad, so for me it means a lot. <laughs> you go really light. It's like nothing holding you up. You just don't know what's on the end. As soon as you get a sight of it as well, it's just yeah. It's dream come true stuff. You just don't know what's on the end. And every time you come to Gigantic, oh, that that's the feeling you get. Don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. Oh. Oh. 
Oh. We are coming to the end of the first day and I thought it would be really good just to have a little catch up. Um, the Saturday, which is the first day, is really just a ha half a day really, is always full of madness and a lot of sweating, getting ready, getting your stuff together, so on and so forth. So that kind of day is a by the by. Um, but today, the stall's really been set out baiting up the areas and so on and so forth. Had the rods out until about 10 o'clock this morning and went round for a shower. Uh, just talking about showers actually, the facilities here at Gigantic Cart are next to none. They're clean and tidy. Uh, there's actually a few females on site today, uh, this week, so all coupled up. So, you know, the gentlemen, if there are females on, keep it all clean. Um, yeah, but they're really, really good. You won't be disappointed. Uh, fish in front. It's gone quite well, to be fair. My left hand rod is only fished five rods out. Uh, not directly out to the left hand side, sort of off centre to the left. And that's because most of the fish seem to be holding up around the margins. Now this isn't, I mean, Coe's point, this isn't a marginal swim. However, if you ever see it on a map, you'll see that it goes around to Scott's corner this side. And I do believe the fish are travelling in and out. So decided to put one nice and short uh, on fifth wrap and uh, I was lucky enough to catch a 49 pounder. A bit of a story behind that. Um, caught it, weighed it up, thought it was possible 50, so I kept it in the net until the baileys were ready because you're not allowed to bring them out if they're over 50. So I waited, weighed him up, he was actually 49, a bit disappointing but I was all weighted up and ready to go in so in I got and unfortunately Without uh, the bailiffs being able to take any photos, the fish was so lively he decided to um, dart into the water, back to his home. So unfortunately we didn't get really any nice pictures of that fish, but we got got a few. Um, but I can't moan, really. What a great start. First day, a 49 pounder, fish known as the bean, I do believe. And uh, we're just coming into the evening now. And uh, yeah, we're all set out and all ready. Fingers crossed it's going to be a busy night. The fish are showing themselves, not directly in front of me, unfortunately, but they are showing. So if they come across the bait, I'll be confident to have another one. Breakfast being devoured and the morning catch up done, it felt the perfect time to head into town to grab some supplies and refresh the mind. The local town is not far from the lake and offers everything you could need, including a tobacco, cafe and restaurants. On the way, you will also pass two supermarkets to stock up in bulk with any of them essential items. Just remember to drive on the right hand side Soon enough, you're itching to get back to the lake. So let's talk bait, bait application and rigs. 
Now, any of you seen my videos before, you know I'm all quite simple with my bait. And as we can see here is link, maize. Simple as you can get. The maize is prepared on site, so I ask for that every dinner. But that is as simple as that. All I do is mix in some fish smart liquid from mainline and always fish with it, hemp seed oil. That goes over the top. Link goes in first. I'll do a little bit of smart liquid, mix all that up. Then a little bit of oil, mix that up. Then goes in the maize and I'll mix it all up together. A little bit more over the top of either or both, should I say, and then mix it up again. And you get a lovely, vibrant mix like that. Really ponging. Can't go wrong with it, really. Bait application this week. Uh, it's been a bit of a different week here on Gigantic Iron for Coast Point. Normally it's straight out where I am at 25 wraps and it's filling it in basically. However, the fish are just not out there. They are hugging the margins. So what I've done on the first day on arrival is I put out five to six key roughly on the long spot as like a, to get them going, so to speak. Um, and unfortunately it hasn't. I've, every day since then, we are on Wednesday now, I've been putting a few spots over the top. Not too much, they're not feeding on it. I don't need to keep on throwing it out there if, if they're not eating, it's as simple as that. Um, however, this on the left hand spot has been the one. I put four to five key out with a catapult to the left hand side, five rods out, rod lengths out should I say. Um, and I've been continuing to do that throughout the days. I've had a fish off there, and I think it's very important to keep that bait trickling. They will come back there. Once you've caught, they will come back there. So that's my confidence. But that's what I've been trying to do, bait application. Not trying to overfeed them, not trying to scare them off, especially on the long spot. I want them to come in. But I don't think putting a mountain of bait out there is going to make them come in. There's enough out there. They're not eating it. I'm not seeing any shows, so I'm just holding off. However, on the left hand, I have had a bite off there, I have seen them, so I am continually just topping it up, topping it up, ringing that dinner bell. And hopefully, a few more will follow. Come off. Oh. So, as you may have just seen, I lost one out the net. Oh, it's so disheartening. You, uh, you spend your time trying to figure out how it comes good and then right at the last minute, it all falls apart. But that is sometimes carp fishing, fortunately. Uh, went in the bivvy, sulked for all the 30 seconds and then started tying up a fresh zig. I'm not too sure, oh bleeps there. I'm not too sure what actually happened, um, it seems like the line has just given away. Um, but there you go, so another one tied up, it's already back out there, 18 foot again, getting some knocks on it, or well, seemingly some knocks on it, so hopefully they find it. But, um, never get too disheartened, if you've done it once, it means they're there, so I'm taking that from it, I've had nothing down there all week so far, and now the Zig has had one, so the fish are down in that area. So later tonight after tea, I'm going to be baiting that a lot heavier um, to get them down on the deck and hopefully finding that zig and uh, we'll go from now. Let's talk rigs. Right, you're going to get bored of this, but the forever faithful Ronnie rig. Everyone fishes with it. It's my go-to when I come here along with a combi rig, but this is a spinner rig. Um, it just doesn't let you down. Two pieces of slow sinking maize. It's all you need. They're down there grubbing around. It's in your mix as well. Gets them every time. 
onto a size four crank. Best pattern to hook in my opinion, always fish it this way. With a cut down yellow kicker. I'm not gonna show you how to tie these guys because you can find it absolutely any, anywhere on YouTube. Cool. This is on a running rig. I don't like using fixed rigs, uh, rigs on Gigantica. I think the running rig is so much better. It literally does pull in, but as soon as you get that take, fish is bomb and it's away and it's free running. And I think that converts so many more fish, especially on venues like this. So that is on my five rat spot to left hand side and that's what I've caught on. So next rig is the combi rig. Now, you might be asking yourself why I've got two different rigs out. Well, I've actually got three, I've also got a zig. Um, these rigs, the combi rig, should I say, has caught me so many big fish over the years. I like to think of it as a big fish rig. Not too sure why. I like to fish a longer hair than most and have the bait a bit further away, the hook bait a bit further away from the hook. I believe that gives a chance for the bigger fish to suck up the bait, the hook goes right in and he catches the lip on the way back out. I think it's too tight, they can, excuse the terminology, but suck and blow without it catching hold. So I like a bit of uh, distance between the hook and the hook bait. Um, this is the new loop material from Corda. Um, I can't say I've seen a lot of difference in the action since I've changed over from the armor cord of 30 pound. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily that bad. I'll be happy to use both and do still use both. Um, and then that's on to the 25 pound boom. Nice bit of putty. As we all know, it just kicks away, sits there every time, picks it up, it resets itself. It's just my go-to big fish rig. Well. We're into another one on the zig. And uh, he's already pulling back this one. It might just be an angry little one. But I really don't want to mess it up like last time, to be honest. So, ooh. Once bitten, twice shy and all that. I'm playing nice and gently. Try and get a rod tip down to get him up in the water. Go straight back out there on the spot. We've seen a few more jumping out there today, so it could be the point of the fact that the weather hasn't been as bright today, so they might have pulled out the margins to find the warmer weather uh, within the layers further out. But you never know. Putting up a good little scrap, this one. It's still quite a way up. Do like to keep the rod tip nice and low. Try and bring him up in the water. It's hard to get a feel of him just yet. Don't think he's massive though, the way he's scrapping. In my experience, the bigger ones normally wait until the right <laughs> underneath the rod tip. Or well, they're just very lazy in general. Right, he's getting round, going round to the right hand side there. It doesn't go underneath these trees over there. It looks like the zigs are finally working. I've been searching them out with the zigs. I've had the adjustables on up and down the water column. Having everything. Couldn't find any, so I just opted for an 18. It's 23 foot of water in front of me. So 18, good number really going right this one. Try and really bring around. We don't want no mistakes. Don't want to bully him though. Really don't want him getting in any snags. So, oh, little pull back now. Give him a bit more. I'm going to play this one so gently. 
with that in. Oh, 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 oh. Did not like that at all. Come on, buddy. Play nice. Let me drag him over. So we can pull him out for where he's going to. Get his head up. It's always very nerve wracking once you've just lost one. You want to get this one right. But same scenario as before, 18 foot zig, so. Ooh. Right, there's the lead clip, so. No, it's not. Two feet is a dangerous time. This is where it all went wrong last time. Now he goes again on his pull away. Give him some. and tipping over his dorsal. Don't like that. At all. Oh, he's trying to go again. I don't want to bully him. Oh. How did you feel after that? Oh, the pressure on that one, mate. A bit, a bit thankful, actually. The uh, knees are still shaking a little bit. I so wanted to, after losing that other one, oh, gave him so much respect, as you should with them all, but. Yeah, normally just the weight. I don't, he's not, I don't want, I don't know, he's looking bigger actually. I mean, he might be a 30 something, but definitely a lot of fight in him. Right, this is a Gigantica Mirror Cup, 36 pounds on the zig. At the second attempt, it must be said, very nerve wracking. But just look at this, absolutely stunning. So faithful, it's just such a, such a wicked place to come. All the fish are stunning. Can't really ask for more. Still a few days left, maybe some more. We'll see. So, today, tell us your thoughts and opinions now. How are you feeling? A bit more upbeat now. Now I've actually landed one on that zig. Um, to be honest, it, how dire it's been looking all week, I thought that's going to be it. Like, that was the chance there and then gone. But I don't want to jinx it. It looks like it's turning around a little bit. There have been more fish further out. We've Elaborate seen. on that for the viewers that don't know. All right, so the story so far of the week has been everything marginal. So I've caught off my left hand spot, which is only five rod lengths out. So it's sort of like just on the bottom of the shelf. So I've caught there, but nothing's been seen out in front. And today, somehow it's been overcast today. So obviously the sun hasn't been warming up their margins. So I believe the fish have now pushed out to get in warmer waters in the layers and now we're starting to see them. So fingers crossed, for the rest of the week, this is how it stays, and they get on the munch. However, it didn't come off the bottom, it came off the zig. So maybe that'll be later tonight, when they venture down in the middle of the basket. Wednesday night is barbecue night, a highlight of the week of Gigantica. If you had forgotten you was on a holiday venue, then this night reminds you exactly of that. Probably where I'm not bullying it, to be fair. Just try not to lose it. <laughs> Should have more faith on the zig, really. But 
once bitten, twice shy and all that. Oh, big dive again. So much fight in this lake, it is unbelievable. Turn around back up this way. It's the first sort of evening bite we've had as well, to be fair. Big lunge, that one. No, and there we go. I bet it snapped it again. You are joking. No, no, keep your lights there a minute, look, because there's that. You weren't doing nothing wrong with no. that fish neither. Playing it well soft. Snapped you. Snapped it, look, here again. Bosh. You are joking. Straight through it. Gets it caught on sink down there and it just threads straight through it. beautiful look at this this is a little bit more beautiful coming off the zig once more 40 pound mirror another one solid this fish absolutely solid let's get her up so we can have a look All of them in here are absolutely stunning. Some more stunning. More stunning in her. I don't even know if that's a word. But they are all stunning fish. Let's get her up. There we go. Ooh, she's a bit slimy go now that is a way to wake up and a good way to start your day 40 pound gigantica mirror where that be she's seen the light look at this look at that don't get them at home every day 40 pound gigantica mirror Absolutely stunning. Thank you, gorgeous. Let's have her back. Come on. So you join us on a Thursday. Lost them two fish last night, caught two last night. So three two to me in terms of losing them to getting them. Decided today to put a little bit more bait out because they seem to be down there. Um, whether they're on the bottom or not, I'm not too sure, but they're definitely taking the zig. So, just gonna put it out there, see what happens. I reckon a bucket full, and if they turn up on it on the bottom this evening, I should be into a few more. If not, hopefully the zigs will carry on producing. However, the weather has changed slightly. There's a massive crosswind coming over now. Uh, it's making spotting quite difficult, actually. Um, so we don't really know what that's going to do to the fishing. Hopefully, it stirs them up a bit and they get on it. If not, it'll be very quiet rods. Warning, the following clip contains competition details of an obscene nature. It's competition time, probably the moment you have been waiting for. Now, this is for you and a friend to join me on the road lake on the 21st of October. 2023 that is october the 21st 2023 
for six nights, Saturday to Saturday. Book yourself some holiday. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and comment the word win. W-I-N, win. That's all you need to do, and you can be joining me. I'll be doing a draw over on my Instagram channel on August the 7th, so head over there at Carp Angler Danny Eastwood, that's the channel. Head over there, get all excited, get your mates round, see if you're the winner. And you'll be joining me over there catching some incredible carp. Can't wait to see you. Good luck. And we are into the evening again. And we are into another carp. And this one has actually torn off and has been taking line like you wouldn't believe. It's on a zig again, so I don't really want to bully it too much. But he's absolutely torn off. I don't know where he's gone. There's tires out in the middle at Gigantica. Um, don't really know why they're in there, but that's what we're told. Uh, just in the middle of the lake. So fishing so far out as I am, I'm just wondering where he's headed towards them. But, not. We are in a time to concentrate. With the losses, I really don't want to start the evening with another loss. This one is definitely pulling back. It's really hard to, I've said this a few times, it's so hard to tell the size of them at such a range. And smaller ones always normally scrap harder than the bigger ones. Just take it nice and steady, as I've learned. If I'm lucky enough to get him in down the front, I'll be extra, extra careful. I really don't want any more losses on my card this week. I think I've had enough of them. Oh, he did take some line off me. Gonna give him that. That's a slowing down. He was like a steam trap. All I need now is for someone to turn around and say it's Big Fish Thursday. <laughs> that really set me off. <laughs> oh, and there, there he is. But it doesn't feel. I don't know. Biggest this week that's been caught is a, I think it's 52, the baby world. And that was caught by none other than Daryl Peck, who started off in the tree line. And now he's down on pole position as it just wasn't happening for him in there. And that's where he caught the baby world, which is a lovely looking fish. Uh, who knows what can be on the end? Still kicking back. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be a small one, this. Quite a few stockies have been out this week, which has been interesting. Just check me clutch there. And if he takes a big lunge, I want to be able to take it. That's the thing, I've been talking about the zigs quite a lot, but when you see that lead clip, just as I did now, you still know you've got another 18 foot beyond that. Starting to really kick up a stink now. Right underneath the rod tip. Big swirl on the water. Out there. Still taking it.
it's kind of one of those situations you don't want to see the fish. You know he's there. There he goes again. It's not quite ready. Just give him some extra time. Let it play out. I've got all the time in the world, mate. Well, it's not gone until Saturday morning. So don't take the mic, but you know, it's heading round by that tree. Still got me other rod in the water. Hopefully don't get caught up in that. It's right underneath the rod tip now. Try and get him up, getting some gulps of air. Get this net, this is the hardest bit. The only thing I can really suggest is get your net out there. Ready. Give him a couple of gulps of air. Get your rod right back. Ooh, not that time. Not that time at all. Here he goes, he is nice and tired. We'll go for another big kick. Lean right back on that rod. Go on, don't let him go. Bosh, that is how we do it. Right, let's have a look at this hook hold. Oh, banging. Size six mixer, still a bit of black foam. Absolutely nailed in that bottom lip. I'll give that sharpen up, bit of a tidy up, and that can go out again. So let's have her up. 26 pounds of early evening carp here at Gigantica. This just never gets boring. To be honest, not the biggest. The size really doesn't matter. It's just a buzz you get off it. Absolutely love this sport. You can call it a sport. Passion. Absolutely love it. Thank you very much, sweetheart. So let's talk about what to bring to France. Let's start with a bivy. We're going to break this down into sections. Bivy first. Right, I've got the Tracker Tempest 150. That's just big enough for me. It's a 1.5 man. So it's not the whole two man, which is sometimes too big of a footprint. It's a 1.5. Offers me plenty of space for the whole week and all my gear to go with. This bivy comes with an inner capsule. That is a lifesaver. If you don't want uh, four-legged friends running around with you, get one of them. They will never get in there. It's got a uh, mozzie mesh all the way around it, so then mozzies stay out as long as you keep it zipped down like I have now. You can open up all the windows around it. Loads of air coming through for them hot days. It's an absolute winner, in my opinion. Right, so let's take a rummage through the electrics bag and the personal effects. This is where most people bring way too much stuff. I haven't got the kitchen sink hiding in this bag, I promise you. What I will touch on first though, no need to laugh, but uh, factor 50, I'm ginger, it gets very hot out here. If you do not bring sun cream, you're a bit of an idiot. If you do bring it and don't use it, you're even more of an idiot. And if you don't wear it on because you don't like getting oil on your hands, you're just a fool. Put it on, stay safe. That sun can be very, very dangerous and ruin your holiday. Get it on. Kid sensitive, just for me. Right, let's delve in. So, what I bring. Ridge Monkey Vault, power pack. All week long, never lets you down. Ultimate power, charging your phone, your lights, so on and so forth, perfect. Ridge Monkey head torch, obviously it can be any head torch. Make sure you've got one though, you're definitely gonna need it. For a little bit of ambiance in the evening for tying them rigs and that, get yourself the Ridge Monkey Bivy Light. I do know Tracker dudes, same, loads of companies do now. Got a metal clip, goes on the outside of your Bivy, snaps on, it's in place, remote control, on off, 
perfect for the night time when you need it. Make sure you bring some wires with you for phone charging, etc. They are a definite must. Right, what else we got? Right, two edges. Tracker, light. I'm not gonna be able to see it in this light. It's a bug zapper. Perfect for them gnats that crawl in there, or fly in there, should I say. Keep it up, you go in there 10 minutes, it's gone dark, turn it on. Doesn't, don't hear it go, bzz, bzz, but it does. You can see them all collecting in there. Get a little brush to get them out. Stops you getting bitten. Best purchase, one of the best purchases I've ever done that one. And then, the tracker fan. Wouldn't be without this, to be honest. And it's not necessarily because of the heat. In the back here, you have a little swab and thing where you can put smellies in it to keep the gnats away, it kills them off. Bang that on at night time. Not all night, but just for a little while. And that and that will keep everything out of your way. Let's see what else we've got on there. It already seems like a lot, doesn't it? Right, coils, yet again for outside the bivvy, sitting out at night time. Light one of these up, smoke gets rid of gnats, they do not like it. Then there it is, the citronella oil, which go in the back of the fan. The gnats dislike it. Get on it, it's well worth it. Let's just throw that back in there. Right, let's take a look down this one. Right, here it on. Bring some. <laughs> if you hay fever, any allergies, so on and so forth, bring yourself some pirate on, you will need it. Uh, some gnat cream. Some of this, need that just in case you get bitten. Got a pamphlet just in case you get any burns. That all goes in there. Let's see what else we got. Huh? Oh, yeah, again, hay fever sufferers, get yourself some of these hay fever wipes. They will help you out no end. And I think we're pretty much done for this one. Ah, deep spray. Another good one. If you're out in the evenings, then gnats come out, and they are huge gnats as well. It's got sub, yeah, a couple of squirts of this around the wrist, around the neck. Don't come near you. I've been using it all week, and I've picked up one, I believe, so far. That's well worth it. Right. You've obviously got to stay clean when you're out here. The city is Gigantica, absolutely lovely. Some French lakes, not always so. So you need to be able to keep yourself clean. Ridge monkey bag, let's stay in that mirror. You know, we've got toothpaste, toothbrush, sprays, so on and so forth. Let's go on this side. Some wipes, just in case you need them. Got some deep soap, mozzie soap, that's very helpful. That all goes in there. And for some reason, everyone fish, every fisherman, Seems to have the original sauce, mint one. Don't know why, it just seems to be a go-to, but very refreshing. So get yourself on that, you will not be disappointed. Now, clothes. Now, we predicted the weather to be quite poor out here this week. As you can tell, it's actually a bit roasting. I've even got a sweat on sitting here, sun's out. So you kind of need to bring a selection. Now you can wear them over again, but what I like to do, I don't want to go home and uh, mix up all my clean clothes with my dirty clothes. So I have my clothes, and I use one of these bags from Calder, and I literally fold it all up, it goes in there, all my dirty stuff, and it'll go back in my clothes bag, but all wrapped up. Get home, whip this one out, that one's for the wash. The other one with the clean stuff doesn't need washing. And finally, footwear. Oh, it doesn't look like footwear, but these are my waders. You, I suggest you get some. You will normally need them, especially if you catch a big fish and you're in the margins. Can go in in your pants, but it's not always nice, especially if it's a bit chilly. Uh, yeah, welly boots, fine, but margins are normally too deep for them. So bring yourself some waders in a wader bag. Problem solved. To aid with the bad weather that can happen, the cold mornings and then the sun, uh, I like to bring selection of hats. Now some people say I take the mickey when it comes to hats but I don't actually think I do. I think they're just very jealous of my selection. Like so many different things, different colours, different styles and uh, you just end up with the one that you want for the occasion.
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome to my bivvy, a place of privacy and safety and security and all the things you need to escape the day. However, it's the bed we need to talk about. You need to make sure you bring out a really comfy bed with you. It's six, seven nights out on the bank. You're gonna be feeling it by the end of the week. I've got the Tracker Level Light oval bed, which is perfect for me. I'm a big lad, um, as you can see. And uh, I like to sleep sort of on my side, fetal position, and it's perfect. That extra wide bit in the middle, absolutely marvelous. Coupled with that, I've got two pillows, Tracker Half Moon, and a rectangle. I love having two pillows, it's the easiest thing for me. Just back to the clothes slightly, when I'm sleeping in the bed, I don't like feeling restricted. The sleeping bag is definitely, definitely 100% warm enough. However, I go with a colder thermal layer with a t-shirt over the top, and on the bottom I do the same with a pair of shorts. That means I can move around in the bed, I can shoot out to the rods, everything, and be nice and warm. You couple them with a pair of these bad boys, some Crocs, get a camo ones, the other ones are just not it for fishing. But you get a pair of these, them clothes, you're straight out there. These slip on nice and easy, you won't miss anything at all. Now, if you don't mind, and not being rude, please uh, may I have a little bit of a privacy. Thank you. <laughs> so, tackle, what do you need to bring? I'll be really honest with you, you can overthink it as I open my call tackle box and you see a mountain of stuff. You can overthink it and you shouldn't. Just fish the way you would at home. You honestly, I know I've said it a hundred times, you don't need to change loads and loads of things. Just don't do it to yourselves. I've just got all the normal bits in there. I've got my hooks, uh, rig line, spinner kit. I don't know, it's really hard to put a slow sinking maze. Don't overthink it. If there's anything in particular that is, I'm not covering, uh, in this film, just give me a shout on Instagram or on YouTube and I'll answer it, but the, honestly, just do what you do at home. Don't have to bring loads and loads of tackle. There's just no need for it at all. You're wasting your time. Do not make yourself out of pocket by buying loads of stuff. Just do what you do at home, just out here. So let's move on to the rods, the reels and the line and what it's all sitting on. Um, I'm lucky enough to have some quarter Kaisens. It's the first time I've used them out here. They're a 12 foot, four pound version, and they are an absolute dream. However, you don't need to have these. Anything from 3.5 up to 3.75 test curve rod will do the job more than adequately out here. I couple that with some Beja reels. Can't go wrong with these. Everyone knows Beja are just Bejas. You can't go wrong, but yet again, a big, a big pit reel will do the same job. They are on the Delkins TXIDs. I haven't really come away from Delkin since I started uh, carp fishing, to be honest. Um, there are the foxes out there, the Nashes. I just love the sound of these, the vibration, the sensitivity, it's perfect for me. Um, the line I'm using is the Corder Long Truck, 15 pounds, 30 pound leader. Yeah, again, just helping me cast out there. Wouldn't say it's doing too much, because I'm not way, way out there. I'm only 25, but it all aids and it all helps. This setup has been my setup for the week. Don't have to have the same as me, but make sure them test curve rods are 3.5 or 3.75, and you should have no problem at all. Right, scales. You need to bring your scales when you come to Gigantica. Do not need to bring a net. You do not need to bring a waist sling but you do need to bring your scales and your distance sticks. They used to provide them here, but people decided to start breaking them and nicking them because, because well, you know what people like that are like, and I hope they're banned for life, there's no need for it. So you need to bring them. Do check though with every commercial lake that you come to uh, in Europe, because the rules vary. However, here you need to bring your scales and you need to bring some distance sticks. Distance sticks you need to bring, quarter distance sticks, Little isotope in there can help you see them in the night time if need be. And then, so your two spots, I'll go for the large and the middle, just to help me if I'm struggling on the range or bait up heavily with this one, switch over to top up the spot on the smaller one. And then it is the Kaizen spot rod with the braid. 
30 pound iron off cord leader. Absolutely doing the business. It is top quality stuff. So, just sitting there, having a chillax, as you do, avoiding the sun, because it's me. And uh, the Zig is busted off again. Oh, fighting back just like the other one. Miles out and heavy. God, they do fight in here. Holding itself. Wonder what could be on the end this time. Same rules apply to all the others. Knees still shake. But, uh, same rules, nice and easy. Holding's just like a slab. Moving from left to right on the swim. Uh, if you notice down there, I have got the middle rod in. I haven't put the one out on the deck because it hasn't been doing anything out of that spot. So I've just left plenty of room for the zig. Can't be doing any of them tangles going through lines on the way in, especially when it's not doing anything. So I've kept that one in. Makes it nice and easy for me. Sometimes all you need is one rod in the right spot. Still holding really, really long. Feels very much like that, similar to the one that I had yesterday. 26 pounder. Feel it knocking, diving down to the right now. This one's going to come in lovely. I'm going to have none of that tomfoolery at the net. Losing them. One is holding deep at the moment. So nerve wracking. Just never know what's the end. The legs are like jelly. Such a buzz. Hopefully, he comes over the top of that. If he doesn't, I'll just have to dive the rod tip in the water. Keep it away. I might do that now. Because there's the zig. I'm just going to get this one. Dive it down so it's out of the way. He's trying to go around there. He's pulling back. Keeping an eye on the pressure. It's right down there by that tree. So this is the time I'm going to play it nice and slow. Get him to come back out again, which he has. Let's see if I can bring him up. Wanting to go, just going to keep my nose in there, trust the knots. That's what I've all done before. All pulled out on me. I'll just bring back. Just trying to control him now. Dog on the lead. Yeah, he's only a little one. Putting up a very good fight for himself though. Is always nice. It doesn't want to seem to come in the same place as the others. I'll try and get his head up. And he's off again. Where he wants to go, he's sitting very deep. Yeah, he's 
a bat like this one. Bless him. There we go. Oh, it's actually fouled hook. Fouled hook doesn't count. It's actually in his belly. Oh dear. What a shame that is. So that one doesn't count, I'm afraid. It's failed hooked. Let me have a look. It's not in there. I get out of there, it's in his belly, bless him. Failed hook. No one likes to see that. Look, we'll have a look at him in the net anyway. At least I know they're out there. Could explain the sort of fight we just had. But, uh, yeah, bless him. Let's let him go straight away. Thank you, buddy. Off you go, mate. See you again this time, eat it. Unlucky, let's go again. Yeah, so we a fouled hooked fish. He's obviously swum over it and he's got caught inside, just inside there, he's underneath his belly. They don't count, can't count them. Gotta be in the mush, so just let him go. I'd have been going if it was a 40 or a 50. Lucky enough, I think it was a 20, one of the stockies, so off he goes and we'll go and get his bigger brother. Friday evening has arrived, and after dinner, the customary PB soaking commences. The PB, lads. Hey. The county's in, lads. I'm free, yeah? Yeah. Got the bucket for Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> So Saturday is here again already. It's time to pack down. You have to be off by 10 o'clock at Gigantica, but that does include paying your bills up for the week. So you really need to head over to the main lodge for about half nine late-ish really to get it done to be off by 10. Had a good week, really. Not too bad. It's just, the problem is on the Saturdays, when you look out there, you wonder why you're even leaving. You wish you could just stay, but uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll be back soon. Have a look. Looks absolutely gorgeous. And that is it. The week on the main lake is over. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget the competition. You need to subscribe, like, and comment the word WIN, W-I-N, on this video. And I will see you in October.